Uncle Tim's. It's all good. So I got myself a boat trailer here. And no, I'm not getting a boat. My plan is to turn this into a mobile boom crane that I can use out in the pasture when we process beef. Be able to just process it right out in the pasture. So I'm disassembling it right now, taking off these rollers. And then I'm going to build a little hydraulic, build a platform here with a hydraulics on it and then add a boom to it that will go out the back end and then I'll have to put some outriggers that fold out off the back end there to give it some stability. <clears throat> but that's my plan is to put a boom on here and be able to process animals right out in the pasture. It's so much so much easier. We just did one recently, not by choice. That's just where it had to, to be. And when we got all done, it just seemed like it was so much simpler to to go ahead and, and kill the animal and eviscerate it and skin it right there in the pasture and not have to deal with all that hauling it away. So now I'm going to get this all, all the boat stuff taken off and then try to figure out how to put a boom on it with hydraulic lift and then also uh, a cable lift, cable hoist. So run the boom up in the air and then have a cable hoist on it to be able to raise and lower things up and down. So I'll try to keep you updated on the progress. This is a 19 foot trailer and I got it for $550, and even if I had to scrap the whole trailer, just the wheels and the axle are worth more than that. I mean, the, those wheels are in good shape. They're not brand new, but they're in good shape, and try to buy an axle and wheels new, you couldn't touch that by a long shot, and this isn't, doesn't, isn't going to have to be road worthy although it did tow really nice coming home towed it up the interstate 75 miles an hour no problem but this is just going to be once i get it together plan is just to keep it over in the pasture and use it there be able to harvest the animal right out there in the pasture then load it into the back of a pickup truck and take it back to the walk-in cooler put it in there and then process process it from there. Anyhow, I'll try to keep you posted and see how this goes. Stay tuned. Alright, I got all the rollers off and got stuff disassembled. I think I might try to reuse these brackets here in the middle with those pieces of square tubing. So I didn't take those off just yet. So we'll maybe see if that's something that can be reused. As a pivot point or maybe where the hydraulic ram goes somewhere in there anyhow so we made a little bit of progress got it apart some of that stuff was really rusted together it took a while but finally got it to break loose
So that's indicating that that tip of that boom is at 14 feet above the ground. So have that string tied at 14 feet out from the end of the boom as well. So it's 14 feet from that end of the board up to where that string is tied up there. It's a 16 foot board so I am checking both 16 feet and 14 feet to see how long of a boom I need to make but I'm hoping to get away with 14 feet. You can see right there is where it would hang at 14 feet so that's out from the end of the trailer. This brace here will be moved forward to right over the axle. So that'll give us room to work around there. So we'll be out from the end of the trailer and not running into that. And that gives us 14 feet up to there, which is plenty for hoisting a beef up. Because right now we have a 12 foot hoist but with the distant, the hoist is bolted, the electric hoist is bolted on, onto the bottom of the beam that's sitting at 12 feet. And then with that and the gambrel, we lose a little over a foot. So then we're just not quite able to get a beef clear off the ground. Its head is still touching when we try to hoist it. So this, that's 14 feet, like I said. So that's plenty of height to lift a beef and have it not touching the ground to be able to finish skinning it and it will only be hoisted for a very sh short time but so I went ahead and flipped this brace over to see what that would be like with that flipped over and raised up and that gives me a little more so I can get away with a shorter boom and ha still get the height and have clearance on the end of this trailer here. And then there will be some uh, legs that extend out uh, with some jacks on them to stabilize this to keep the trailer from wanting to tip backwards. And then of course there will be quite a bit of weight in front of that axle once we add the steel plates and all that that's going to hold the, the boom pivot. But this looks like I will be able to use a 14 foot boom instead of 16 feet. That'll be nice not to have that extra two feet on there. Save that the weight of the, on that boom plus having it that much of a boom hanging out behind the trailer going down the road. Although this probably won't go down the road very much. But... This was my prototype just to see if 14 foot boom would work and it will and here on this end my plan is, is to flip that other brace over and put it right there between the axles and then have a some braces and a big steel plate there and then the boom actually going to sit up probably even a foot higher than right there where it is right now. So that'll give me give me even more clearance out there. Won't have to raise it at quite such a steep angle to get get it off the ground high enough. And plus that'll give us more clearance past the end of the trailer. All right, so I'm gonna measure that angle. It's looking like it's pretty close to 45 degree angle there, which is not too bad. That will work pretty good. Don't want to go much less than that because then you're starting to put more stress on the hydraulics. <clears throat> when you start dropping below 45, then this, it's the hydraulics are having to exert more force. So at 45, and I'm not sure exactly where the cutoff is there, but I know that above 45, when you get up around 50 degrees, it's a lot less stress on the hydraulics, depending on how I, the angle I have mounted here at the bottom, that is. So it takes a lot of figuring, science and math, and 
trigonometry and a bunch of stuff to figure out the, the angles and the pressures on the beam and the hydraulics and all that. I think I have it figured out close enough to give me, I'm way over building this. So I'm building this, uh, specking it out to where it can lift a ton and lift a ton from the ground up with the hydraulics. But that's not, I never planned to do that. My plan is is to raise the boom and then use a hoist to lift the weight up from the ground. So the boom will be up and in a stable position where that's less stress on the hydraulics and then go ahead and use a hoist to lift the animals up off the ground. That's the safest way. And like I said, I'm way over building this to build in a, a huge safety factor. So I don't plan on ever lifting anything anywhere near a ton. Most of my cows that I harvest are right around 1,000, 900 to 1,000 pounds. So this is more than double the capacity and that's if you were to use the boom to lift the animal clear up off the ground, which I never intend to do. Anyhow, so we'll keep on working on this thing and keep you updated.